Everybody thanked the National Bank of Poland. I would like to thank back the participants, the panelists, the uh, speakers, and the audience. And yes, uh, we never uh, expected that uh, the um, international surroundings of this conference will be will provide so much suspense as it as they does. Uh, I have just been informed that the European Council has been moved to Wednesday from. So uh, Oluren should have been here, as a matter of fact, <laughs> or not? Maybe I don't know. No matter. What. But uh, uh, this shows you uh, how hard is the work of central bankers these days. But uh, uh, on top of thanking everyone, uh, I would like to offer a few, uh, few remarks on the topics discussed. Not all of them. I'll choose only two or three and share some comments that maybe we should uh, use tomorrow uh, during the concluding panel uh, that I'm also inviting everyone uh, to participate uh, and, to, and to, uh, to, um, to watch and listen to and, and discuss uh, tomorrow. Well, first, it's about the suspense. So the suspense is obviously about will they provide a solution? And, uh, and the problem is that, that many expect some quick fix solutions, that, that the leaders uh, will draw a rabbit from the head and here everybody would be happy, uh, somehow miraculously the confidence of the markets cherished so much will be rebuilt and, uh, and then will sail smoothly to the next, to the next uh, ports. As a matter of fact, in, in one of, of the uh, um, uh, interventions from the audience, there was sort of uh, an echo of those uh, longing for quick fix solutions that are here we uh, introduce euro one euro two euro three euro uh, minus and so on and so on but the only problem is the technical problem how to get from here to there and um, and when i when i uh, listen to uh, to analysts to um, to market uh, participants, uh, to commentators, uh, and some policymakers, mainly from the other side of the of the ocean, they they long also for for those quick fix solutions. Um, basically, why not? Tell the European the European Central Bank to just simply monetize all those debt, and we start from scratch. You know how unrealistic and un-European it is. Uh, this is not an issue. Uh, I think that uh, there will be no quick quick fix solution. Uh, the the way that will take is. Uh, the way that is sometimes uh, labeled muddling through. Muddling through does not mean drifting. Muddling through, in my opinion, means that you are using all the, all the existing political options and try to uh, sail in the right direction and don't expect that it will be solved in days, weeks, or even months. I'm sorry, I'm not optimistic. In this sense, in this sense, we are up for, a, for many years of difficult time. Uh, 
This is also a time when we discuss short-term issues, how to solve the sovereign debt crisis. We discuss uh, the slightly uh, longer-term issues, how to prevent the next crisis. Some, some, some people say it's not about the next crisis, it's about the past crisis. But they are certainly not, uh, not the Euro enthusiasts uh, that, we, uh, that we all are. Uh, but at the same time, we discuss more seriously than ever structural issues. Um, the fact that uh, excessive imbalances procedure is being included in the, uh, in the uh, economic oversight of the European Commission is much more important that we have uh, something which is called Euro Plus or whatever. In my opinion, Lisbon 2010 was never treated seriously because the issue of spillover of structural weaknesses was underestimated. Well, Lisbon agenda was more or less something like a voluntary menu of, 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 uh, of measures that countries would be advised to take for their own good. If they don't, well, they will suffer. They will lose market shares, even to the benefit of others, to the benefit of neighbors. So now, in the crisis, we understand that structural witness, weakness of a big country, especially of a big country, is everybody's problem. Now, there is a chance that, no matter how we call it, excessive imbalances, procedure, and, and, and peer pressure, a real peer pressure, or whether we call it Euro Plus, Euro 2020, this has a chance to be treated more seriously and unleash the potential that exists in the um, um, scler sclerotic Europe. I don't, I don't believe it. I don't believe that Europe is, is doomed to sclerosis. But basically, we, 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 had, we were so, so satisfied with the way of life that we have developed, solidified, that is now in danger and to defend it, we have to change something. And maybe in the process, we can unleash the still existing potential in the, in the European economies. And the last remark is about the region of Central and Eastern Europe. When I was still in the, at the IMF, and I, I suspect that this was the only reason why I was recruited there was that everybody thought that this region will be a black hole of the European economy, if not a global economy. If a crisis strikes, we are all here in the region doomed with a potential, uh, potential spillover onto, onto the well-behaving, advanced uh, European uh, elderly brothers. Um, well, the crisis hit us badly, and let me let me sort of a bit frivolously uh, extend the notion of uh, of Central and Eastern Europe onto Iceland, <laughs> because we share certain certain uh, certain characteristics of the reaction to the crisis. Uh, the crisis hit, uh, and uh, there was a deep recession, but there was no currency crisis, no banking crisis except for Iceland and Ukraine. Uh, and what was shown was, on the one hand, international community solidarity, yes, but also, which was much more important, uh, the peoples of this region, of this part of Europe, including Iceland, um, showed resilience and readiness to sacrifice. 
they still had something to defend. And they defended it rather successfully, even if the recovery in our region is uneven and somewhat tepid in some countries. But still, this is clearly not a lost part of Europe. Well, a lesson that we have to, to, to learn uh, from this crisis as the business model that we uh, developed over the last years has to be modified. And the business model is, as I, I mean, to put it very briefly, uh, import foreign capital, use it the best way you, 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 you can converge. Well, the problem is that uh, this is becoming uh, more and more risky. Dependence on foreign capital, uh, external imbalances, are almost unbearable in the present situation, in the situation, in the decade to come. If we want to converge, uh, the problem is we would like to converge to a dynamic economy, not to a stagnant economy, but if we want to converge to whatever there is to converge, we have to rely more on our internal uh, savings. This is a big change for us in this region uh, that is already happening, that is already happening. So these are the three, uh, the three, uh, let's say, remarks, the three uh, thoughts that I, of many, uh, that I drew from, from today's discussions. That, number one, there will be no quick fix. We're up for a, for a painful way and a stormy and a stormy voyage. Second, it it may unleash, it may push West Europeans to unleash their still existing economic potential, structural reforms. And third, we have to change our business model to a certain extent, rely on our internal savings more than before the crisis. Well, this is, uh, this is what I learned today. Uh, probably everyone else will have learned something slightly different. Uh, this is all for today. I invite all of you who can stay in Warsaw overnight to join us in the special session on Saturday, uh, which will be uh, moderated by Mario Monti. And I can, uh, I can promise you a, a wonderful composition of the panel. That's, for the, that's, that's it for, for, this, uh, for this afternoon. Thank you very much.